Last video I talked about the TMNT tournament fighting games, and now we get to the last two games, Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist. Many would consider these the crown jewels of the collection, but are they truly the crown jewels? Instead of a normal review, this is going to be a side-by-side -side review. This means both games are going to be reviewed at the same time. With that, let's begin. It's no secret that both games look good for their respected consoles. What separates Turtles in Time from Hyperstone Heist is that the former is just an arcade port while Hyperstone Heist is original. The animation from Hyperstone Heist is a bit choppy while Turtles in Time is slightly smoother. The colors are a bit dirtier on the Genesis but works in its favor creating a darker aesthetic while Turtles in Time is cleaner. What truly separates Turtles in Time from Hyperstone Heist is the Neon Knight Rider stage which demonstrates the Mode 7 graphics and many would consider it the best stage of all. Had the Genesis come up with a level with a similar concept, then the Genesis would have won, but the SNES wins this round. Both games have good control, but it boils down to button use and movement. Unfortunately, you can't reconfigure in either game, but then again with a simple layout on an Xbox controller, why would you? Both games have a similar layout with X as attack and A as jump. Turtles in Time's control is a little loose and to run you have to press right trigger. Hyperstone Heist's controls use the four buttons and also have a slightly more responsive movement input. Both suffer from random move execution, but it's more noticeable on SNES, so Genesis takes the win on controls. Turtles in Time is a complete port of the arcade game, but with a new level, the Technodrome, and as mentioned before, Neon Knight Rider is reworked for a Mode 7 level which makes for 10 levels. Sewer Surfing is also reworked as a bonus stage instead of a regular stage, with Rat King as the boss instead of a timed event against the Pizza Mutants. Hyperstone Heist is only 5 levels, but is broken down to at least 3 segments, with the exception being level 4, the Gauntlet, which is a rematch against the bosses with no pizzas. Hyperstone Heist also borrows very little from the Turtles in Time arcade and has original levels level design. Despite Neon Knight Riders being the best level, Hyperstone Heist gets the win for originality. It seems Turtles in Time got the right idea and have the bosses be recognizable characters from the cartoon and toy lineup. Hyperstone Heist's boss lineup is really weak. With Leatherhead, Rocksteady, Baxter, Krang, and Treader, that's not impressive. Let's not forget Tatsu. You mean this guy? Here's the real question. Where's Bebop? Can't have Rocksteady without Bebop. Speaking of, they appear together on Skull and Crossbones dressed up as pirates. Turtles in Time takes this round, no questions asked. Both games are identical in nature with the same moveset, but Turtles in Time brought with the one thing that separates it from Hyperstone Heist, throwing foot soldiers off the stage. I'm very surprised that Hyperstone Heist didn't include this. No matter how many times you do it, throwing foot soldiers into the screen never gets old. Interestingly enough, this is the only way to defeat Shredder in the first Technodrome stage. It's a shame this wasn't incorporated in other boss fights. Hyperstone Heist suffers from being too basic, and as already mentioned, Sewer Surfing and Neon Knight Riders were reworked into bonus stages with the latter being done in Mode 7. Turtles in Time takes this round. Before we get into this, let me make it clear that I am aware of both systems' audio outputs. Hyperstone Heist uses some of the soundtracks from the Turtles in Time arcade. It's not bad for the Genesis. Turtles in Time also takes its entire soundtrack from the arcade. Both also have songs that are exclusive for each game. So this one ends in a tie due to both having the same soundtrack and exclusivity. Turtles in Time brings more to the table than Hyperstone Heist. Excluding the co-op mode, Turtles in Time also has a versus mode where two turtles fight each other a la Street Fighter. That's not all, there is also a time trial where one turtle has to complete four trials to get the fastest time across three stages. Turtles in Time gets the win on this one. If you already have played Turtles in Time, you already know the plot. Hyperstone Heist's story is that Shredder takes the treasured Hyperstone from Dimension X and shrinks Manhattan Island. Why does this sound familiar? Because this plot is borrowed from Season 2's The Eye of Sarnath Tetralogy. Partially. You'd have to see the episode. To be honest, neither game gets the win for original story. 
Last up is the difficulty. Playing both games on normal difficulty, there was less challenge with Turtles in Time compared to Hyperstone Heist. With three continues used, Hyperstone Heist proved to be the harder of the two games but at the same time, more rewarding. Turtles in Time was beaten on normal with no continues used. Both games are fun but Hyperstone Heist wins this round. So with a score of 4-3 to three with two ties, Turtles in Time is the better game and gets 5 pizzas out of 5. Hyperstone Heist gets 4.5 pizzas out of 5. But what about Kawabunga Collection as a whole? Considering that there has been a surge of collection games as of late, it wasn't a surprise that this one would be made. But with a whole lot of options to tinker with to make the game you wanted to, this is worth playing. And the rewind feature? It's a bit of a double-edged sword. Some like it, some hate it. To conclude this pentology, Kawabunga Collection gets 4 pizzas out of 5. Woo! What a ride! And that concludes the Kawabunga Collection. Thanks for watching.